Shalom. Today we are coming into the fourth month showing how the constellations in the sky correspond with the uh, events, the, the occasions on the Hebrew calendar. The fourth month in the Babylonian named system is called Tammuz. Tammuz is never mentioned as a month in Tanakh, but uh, as you probably know, it is the name of a false god. It's mentioned in Ezekiel 8:14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. So we'll get into a little bit about um, who this character was. It seems like um, the proper name for uh, Tammuz in the Babylonian or Assyrian language was Demuzi, and this translates into being uh, either the faithful sun or the sun who rises. Uh, he is an S-U-N, a sun god. It's good to remember that Babylonia or Babylon and Assyria covered the same geographical area, but uh, in different time periods. Now, there is a phenomenon which is called the precession of the equinoxes where over the course of thousands of years the timing of the equinox and the solstices change in the calendar. So there was a time where the summer solstice was in this month that we're discussing now. Um, in present day it's much earlier. You may have noticed it went by last month uh, in June 21st and now we're in July but what happens is a solstice a solstice is the day where the Sun appears for the longest time in the sky and then the hours begin to cut back and so part of this uh, morning the women who are mourning for Tammuz this uh, false deity they're mourning because uh, in a fertility culture, in an agriculturally based fertility culture, when they see the sun becoming less and less, this is cause for sadness because now the crops won't have as much sun to grow and things like that. So that's the reason for the sadness, for the mourning. Now there, uh, there are some related roots that we can pull uh, out of the Hebrew. One of them is uh, mazah which we see in Deuteronomy 32:24, The King James translates it, They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Uh, probably a more accurate translation is in the NASB where the verb is translated as wasted. So we can see this kind of uh, concept of wasting away. The sun is going away and the crops are going to be going away. There are also cognate roots, um, matzah, and yes this is where matzah comes from, uh, but we're not going to talk about that today. You, uh, there's a link here where you can go uh, learn more about the word matzah, and then also a related word meat. In Leviticus 5, 9, he shall sprinkle the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. It is a sin offering. So even beyond uh, wasting away, these people are actually taking something and wringing it, turning it, and turning it so all of the blood will come out. Uh, that's matzah. Meats. Meats is the modern Hebrew word for juice. If you, uh, maybe you're looking at some orange juice, you're looking at meats tapuzim. It only appears um, in this one verse, but notice that it's translated three different ways. It's the same word. Proverbs 30, 33. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringing, bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. So this idea of wringing something, of squeezing it and turning it, so that something comes out of it, again, and uh, feeds into the idea of this wasting away. Now there are several events which are documented to have happened in the fourth month. Uh, if we count properly from the time that uh, the people 
left Egypt. They arrived in Sinai. In the third month, they received the tablets uh, from Moses. The, God spoke to them from the mountain. Moses goes up on the mountain. And 40 days later, in the next month, in the fourth month, he comes down and breaks the tablets. This month is also crucial in the counting of the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, both in 586 uh, BCE and also in 70. Second Kings 25.3 And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. In Jeremiah 39.2 And in the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. Jeremiah 52, 6, and in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. So this is the breach of the city walls uh, in 586, appears to have taken place on the ninth day of the fourth month. In traditional Judaism, uh, this time is marked from uh, the 17th of the fourth month, to the ninth of Av, and probably you're quite familiar with the ninth of Av. We'll discuss that more when we do next month's presentation. But these three weeks are called Ben Hamitzarim, which means between the straits. The phraseology is in Lamentations 1 3. Ben means between. If you're looking and you can read enough Hebrew to see that the Mitzarim, the straits, is the same as Mitzrayim, Egypt. The concept of Egypt is that it's a, a hard place from the, from the root tsar, uh, which has to do with a hard place, like a rock, like a tsur, and the pressure of people oppressing them. This is um, Mitzarim. Now, it seems like around the, the fall of the second temple in 70, the date got moved from the ninth of the fourth month to the 17th of the fourth month, and that is the three weeks which are marked during this period. And there's many uh, rabbinical restrictions about getting haircuts and not getting married and things like that. According to traditional Jewish practice, both the 17th of Tammuz and the ninth of Av are fast days. However, we see redemption in Zechariah 8.19. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, that's the one we're talking about, the fast of the fifth, which is the ninth of Av, the fast of the seventh, uh, which is not Yom Kippur, but it is a fast day for the uh, assassination of Gedaliah, who was the governor of Jerusalem at the time. And the fast of the tenth, also having to do with the destruction of the city, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Good advice. Love the truth and peace. The uh, astronomical sign for this period is Cancer, the crab. And Cancer, the crab, does not appear anywhere in, in the Bible. Uh, it, the name for it in Hebrew is Sartan, and it's taken probably from a cognate root spelled with a sin instead of a samich. And this root means to cut. Leviticus 21.5 They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So the cuttings is the, is the word there. Zechariah 12.3 and in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Uh, seret with a samach is the modern word for film in Hebrew, and it comes from the idea of cutting something in ribbons. And so the film itself is like a ribbon. And we do see the activity of certain unclean spirits. Mark 1, 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. In Mark 9, 20, and they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. So the action 
of the crab with his claws and his pincers tearing, we can understand the relationship between these ideas. Now there's an interesting legend of Hercules and how the uh, crab came to be in the sky at all. Uh, there were uh, the twelve labors of Hercules and in the midst of one of them he was uh, supposed to be uh, beheading or killing this animal called the Hydra and his heads grew back and all kind of things and um, he was accomplishing this work and the goddess Hera, the false goddess Hera, sent the crab to distract him and bite at Hercules feet with his claws. However, in the legend Hercules crushed the crab with his heel. So this is beginning to sound like a story that we know. If you look at the picture uh, carefully, you can see he's um, trying to whack the heads off this monster. On the one hand, he had an assistant. I can't remember that guy's name. And down under his feet, there are uh, some scorpions, or look, they look like crawfish. I don't know. But there is a crab under his foot there. So the crab came to bite his heel, but he crushed its head. Because uh, crabs are absent from the Bible, many people believe that the addition of the crab to the constellation, to the zodiac, was a later addition. And perhaps this animal is really represented by a scarab, which uh, you can see also has some kind of spiny pierced claws. Going back to the idea of Tammuz and being the sun god, we see that the scarab rolls these balls of dung, which is a nice word for poop, around. And so in watching the scarab push the ball along the ground is kind of a picture of the sun being uh, pushed across the sky. There's another uh, image taken from the scarab which affected the people, and and pro probably you know that the scarab uh, did have a um, spiritual significance to the ancient Egyptians as as a representative of immortality, and part of that comes from the physical fact that the female beetle would dig a hole in this ball of dung and lay her eggs in there, and then she would leave them, and then when the eggs were old enough uh, in a form where they could eat, they actually fed off the dung and then they emerged from the ball of dung seemingly as not having even been uh, born at all. And so the scarab comes to represent immortality the same way that uh, the false god Tammuz and being represented of the sun god carries that implication of immortality. Another thing that ancient writers believe is that the, there was never a crab or a scarab at all. There is a star cluster within the constellation of uh, Cancer, the crab, which is called Presepe, or if in proper Latin, Latin, I understand it would be Prisepe. But um, regardless of how you pronounce it, this is a uh, the, the long line with the two legs coming off of it, that's, that is the Cancer. Uh, you see it's on the ecliptic. And the little yellow dot there marks this special um, group of stars. It's commonly called the Beehive Cluster, but really the name in Latin means a crib, a manger, or a stall. And you can see that there are two stars on either side of it, Ocellus Australis and Ocellus Borealis. And Ocellus is a uh, Latin word for donkey. And so we see here, in fact, that there are two donkeys in the midst of this crib or manger or stall. There is also another star in the group, in the group of Cancer, which is called Tegmene, which means a shell or a seed covering. So it's almost like there are some animals uh, well hidden inside a stall or a shell. The two donkeys might uh, make us think of the tribe of Issachar. Genesis 49, 14, and 15. Issachar is a strong ass couching between two burdens. We see there are two donkeys there between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good 
and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. We know that the children of Issachar are something special from 1 Chronicles 12.32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and their brethren were at their commandment. So we find simultaneously this destructive animal with its claws and the this destruction that came to the city of Jerusalem twice at the same time there's an area inside of it which uh, is called either the beehive or the manger and and there's two donkeys are hiding inside this manger and I think this scripture is relevant Isaiah 26 20 and 21 come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed for behold Yahweh cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain uh, especially as we look into the timing uh, what happens in the following month and the constellation associated with that I think that the sequence of constellations and events uh, is most interesting. Until we cover that, Tasimita Inayam al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.